Joining me live for a response to that is National Senator Matt Canavan. Matt, thanks so much for your time, Senator. So what's your response? Severe weather seems to happen every summer, but is it especially bad this year that it may start to weigh on the economy, as the Treasury is suggesting? Well, look, to me, I mean, unless the Treasurer can provide some greater quantitative detail here, it seems like a, a case of the flooding ate my homework excuse from the Treasurer. He's trying to get in early and blame any weakness in the economy this year or his own budget on these natural disasters, as you say, happen every year in Australia. Now, the, the, the personal impact has been devastating of these floods and uh, a number of Australians have lost their homes, uh, been interrupted in their businesses. Uh, it's been very, very tough and horrific for people. But, you know, we haven't seen the impact on, on, on large city centres like we did with the flooding in Sydney a few years ago, with the flooding in Brisbane uh, around a decade ago. So it's a bit hard to, to me to, to come to the conclusion this somehow would have a huge impact on the overall Australian economy as a whole. As I say, this seems to be an excuse from the Treasurer uh, because there are a number of people warning that the economy could be softer uh, the government is not doing anything to help attract investment to Australia. We've seen that in the reduction in mining projects that are, that are on the books uh, reported in the Australian Today. Uh, and productivity, of course, has been at record lows. So the government should focus on that uh, rather than coming up with new excuses for its own failures. Energy Minister Chris Bowen seems to be getting ready to lift the federal government's cap on coal prices in July. Are you happy to see that the, the government is not seeking to extend the coal price caps? These are, these are a terrible policy. They're always a terrible policy. The price caps don't work. I see the government's out there saying that you've saved... They t they're trying to tell you you've saved $230 on, uh, on your power bills thanks to these policies. And, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd g happily you know, give, the, uh, give the government a scratchy ticket if they could find one person who has had their power bill reduced by $230. That simply has not happened. And these coal and gas price caps are just an example of the government gaslighting you. They are trying to gaslight you to tell you uh, that your prices have come down when clearly they haven't. Now, you haven't had a reduction in your power bills, but you have. Your taxes have helped to provide uh, around one and a half to two billion dollars to coal companies. That's right. We've got a Labor, Green, Teal government, Teal independents propping up this government. And they're giving coal companies one and a half billion, one and a half to two billion dollars. Now, I didn't vote, vote for these coal price caps. Barnaby Joyce didn't vote for the coal price caps. Peter Dutton didn't vote for the coal price caps. Uh, but the, the Labor Party voted uh, to provide massive compensation to the coal industry. It was ridiculous. It hasn't helped you. It's just cost our budget billions of dollars. Just finally, we're running out of time, but in The Australian today, a new analysis shows 72 projects worth more than $68 billion across the nation's top three exports, coal, iron ore and oil and gas, have failed to advance in the last year. The Minerals Council says Labor has gone out of its out of its way to ensure the policy settings related to resources are anti-competitive. But Resources Minister Madeleine King rejected that the sector was under siege and that investors were looking elsewhere. Is she right? Well, this is, da this is data from her own department. This is data from Minister King's department, which says she is wrong, uh, that mining projects are going backwards, not forwards, under this government. And keep in mind, that's in an environment where we've had record commodity prices. We've had a terms of trade that's actually been higher than it was in the last commodity boom 10 or so years ago. We should be attracting more investment. We should have more projects going forward, just as we did during that mining boom. But clearly there's a vote of no confidence from investors in this government because they do not see Australia as a safe place to invest. And that's we've seen that from Japanese investors saying that. Uh, I've heard that behind the scenes all the time, that people are going to other countries. We're about to lose the mantle as the world's largest LNG exporter to the US because they're attracting lots of investment. The government needs to do more here to get serious about attracting investment and keeping our economy strong. We're very strong at the moment, thanks to the investments that were made in our mining industry 10 or so years ago. But if you don't make investments today, tomorrow you're going to be much, much poorer. Senator, thank you as always. We'll chat to you soon. Thanks, mate. Have a good day.